this video, I'll go through an example where we find the parametric form of the solution to a matrix equation. In this case, we're given the matrix A, and we're asked to describe all solutions to the homogeneous matrix equation AX equals zero in parametric form. Now, we notice that this matrix is in echelon form, and we can see where the pivots are. There's a pivot here, here, and here. But it's not in reduced echelon form. And whenever we want the actual solution to a system of equations, or a vector equation, or a matrix equations, it's usually helpful to have it in reduced echelon form. So we should do a couple more row reduction steps to get this matrix into reduced echelon form. So the steps we're going to do here are we're going to replace row 1 by row 1 plus 2 times row 2. That's going to give us a 0 here. And 2 times negative 1 plus negative 5 is negative 7. And then row 2 stays the same. And the rest of the rows all stay the same. And then the last row operation we're going to do is we're going to replace row 1 by negative 3 times row 3. So that's going to give us a 0 here. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12, plus negative 7 is positive 5. And now our matrix is in reduced echelon form. So again, our pivots are in columns 1, 3, and 5. And we've got no pivots in columns 2, 4, and 6. Now remember, we're solving the matrix equation AX equals 0, where this matrix, this matrix with 4 rows and 6 columns, that's A. So this is not an augmented matrix. This is the coefficient matrix. And so if we had had an augmented matrix, we could imagine that we have an extra column of zeros here. That extra column of zeros wouldn't have been affected by any of these row operations. And so if it helps, we can imagine that we have that extra augmented column of zeros to represent this zero vector on the right-hand side of our matrix equation. In this case, our general solution has the form x1 minus 4x2 plus 5x6 equals zero. Our second row of our matrix represents the equation x3 minus x6 equals zero. And the third row of our matrix represents the equation x5 minus 4x6 equals 0. If we solve that for the basic variables, what we get is x1 equals 4x2 minus 5x6. x2 is free because we don't have a pivot in column 2. x3 equals x6. x4 is free because we don't have a pivot in column 4. x5 equals 4x6 and x6 is free because we don't have a pivot in column 6. So this right here is the general solution. That's not what the problem's asking us for, but this is sometimes what we want to look at. So this is the general solution of this matrix equation. So if we want the parametric solution, what we want to do is take this general solution and write it in, a, in the form of a vector. So here's our general solution once again. And again, what we're hoping for is to write this in the form of a vector. So the vector that we're looking for is what's the vector x that solves that original matrix equation? So we know we have six variables, x1 through x6. What do those variables equal? Well, at first glance, we can just look at our, parent, at our general form of our solution and write that in vector form. So we get 4x2 minus 5x6. x2 just equals itself. x2 just equals x2. x3 equals x6. x4 is free, so x4 just equals itself. x5 is 4x6. And then x6, again, is free, so x6 just equals itself. Now, to make this a little bit easier to understand, notice we that, that we have three free variables, x2, x4, and x6. So I'm going to rewrite this so that we arrange it so that it's easier to see which coefficients are going with which variables. So we've got 4x2, and then I'm going to leave a space where x4 would go if we had any x4s, and then minus 5x6. And then next we have just x2. Next, in the third entry, we just have x6. In the fourth entry, we just have x4. In the fifth entry, we have 4x6. And in the sixth entry, we have x6. And now I can break this apart according to each of those three free variables. I've got 4x2, x2, and then 0, 0, 0, 0, because I don't have any x2s in those last four components. And then for x4, I only have a single x4 in the fourth component, and then zeros everywhere else. 
and then for x6, I've got negative 5x6s, then I don't have any x6s, then I've got an x6, and then again, no x6s, 4x6, and then finally x6. And now we simply pull those scalars, x2, x4, and x6, out of each of those vectors. So we get x2 times the vector 4, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. x4 times the vector 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. And x6 times the vector negative 5, 0, 1, 0, 4, 1. And this is what we're looking for when we say the parametric form of our solution. This is the parametric form. We say that x2, x4, and x6 are the parameters, and that this gives us our parametric form of our solution. Another way to think about what this is telling us is that the solution set, again, not what the question was asking for here, but the solution set is the span of the three vectors, 4, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, and negative 5, 0, 1, 0, 4, 1. Because what span means here is that we are looking at all possible linear combinations of those three vectors. And that's exactly what the parametric form is showing us. That any vector that is a linear combination of those three vectors, 4, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, and negative 5, 0, 1, 0, 4, 1, anything that's a linear combination of those three vectors will be in the solution set. And that's exactly what we want when we describe the solution set. So hopefully this helps explain the difference between the general solution, the parametric form of the solution, and the solution set.